Hi, and welcome to LVB Presents. I'm Steph Thompson, founder of the London Voice Boutique, and we're a voiceover agency based in Soho, London. And we're going to take you on a little journey behind the scenes with some of our actors so that you can get a taste of what goes on in this world. Think funny stories, advice and some useful insight on how to navigate this industry. Today I'm happy to welcome Liz Bauer and Joe Cohen, both very experienced voiceovers and actors. Um, hi Liz, hi Joe. Hello, hi. how are you doing? Good. You must be Joe, right? very... yeah. <laughs> Um, so I wanted to talk to you both today because one thing you both do a lot of is audiobooks. And I obviously do lots of other stuff, but it was the audiobooks that kind of was the common ground and I wanted to talk to you both about it. A lot of actors come to me and say, oh, I'm really interested in doing audiobooks. And when I first meet them and I'm like, okay, it is a lot harder than people think. I think they think it's a nice sit down and read a nice book and my granny can then listen to it when she wants to, which is, I, I've literally had that said to me. It's like, oh, I really want to do audiobooks because my grandmother really liked listening to them. And I'm like, oh, awesome. It's a nice <laughs> idea, <laughs> but it is a lot of work. And I wanted to find out more from you two who, who do them quite regularly, just how much work is involved and, you know, the, the ups and the downs really. Loads. Yeah, mm. right. <laughs> oh, well, that's done then. <laughs> <laughs> the end. <laughs> I think it's good to know uh, the um, the things that are available to you to help. Yeah. So there are various websites like How Do You Say and Forvo and Youglish. So one of my things is when I'm reading through, if I come across words that I've never heard of before, which even for someone who reads a lot, it's it's constant. You know, whether you're doing a book that's been a, a translation or something that's predominantly um, factual and yeah. just has lots of statistics or um, like scientific. Uh, scientific words that you just you're not sure of how they're pronounced and stuff um, or medical books too um, luckily mm. my sister and my sister-in-law are both doctors oh, wow. <laughs> so you know I've got them on tap if I if I need help with that but yeah there are lots of websites that you can use so how do you say is a great one you just put in the word and then a, a man with a very deep voice tells you how to say it yeah so um, the, there was one word um, I can't remember what the sentence was but it was something like the baby's face was uh, it, I would have said cherubic or is it oh, cherubic yeah. or cherubic and so I put a little note out to a few of my friends is it cherubic or cherubic and the answer is it's neither it's cherubic, cherubic. oh really cherubic cherubic but yeah well, how many variations yeah. are there on this word <laughs> wow so there are things that yes. so it's just like a constant learning Le curve yeah. of, um, of pronunciation and then as a northerner um, I know that there are words where we, you know I do a lot of narration in RP um, I'm very, very comfortable with that. But there are certain words that always fox me, words like transatlantic. Yes. Because if you watch the news, some say transatlantic yeah. and some say transatlantic. And, they, and I'm like, well, which one is it? Yeah. Which one? You so I really think. Yeah. But I think that that's another thing about the British language is that there is this fluidity to it. And it, whether you pronounce it in a, in a way that a northerner would say it or a southerner would say it, it's neither right nor wrong. It's gone or scone. It's where you're from. Yeah. It's scone. <laughs> but it's just you know so there is there is a certain amount of freedom in it but, but I just research. like to be right yeah and but do you start okay so I send you the script of the audio book what's the first thing you do you read the whole book or and then you go through it again because I'll be honest I'm quite mm. a slow reader so if somebody had said to me you've got to read that book and then you've got to read it again and highlight all the points and mm. you know how, how do you do that that's a lot of work Joe, do what, you, what do you do, do you use I'd an say, app? Um, I just I just read I read the whole book straight away without thinking about the fact that I've got to do the audio book yeah. initially. So you just read um, it to see if you read yeah. it. Do you mark it up as you go through the first time? No. <gasps> no. <laughs> what? I, I don't actually do a lot of marking up. I, 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 what I will do is I will highlight certain pages that have lots of different characters on them. If I'm characterising right. the, right. the... I generally characterise each different character um, rather than just doing a general read which is is an option when you're yeah. doing, doing audiobooks um, but um, so I would just sort of highlight those pages and, and actually you know often there aren't there aren't that many where that happens and then I'll go back to those and then pick them apart um, a second time but I, I quite like to I, you have to know what's going on in the book yes. oh yeah um some people i've heard stories that some people don't even read the books before they go and do it and oh, that's God. insane to me yeah that's um, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't read the book yeah but i but i also like to be in a place 
of I, I don't I like to be in a place of suspension when I'm actually reading the book so I don't like to prep it too much right. um, so that actually it's exciting in the moment when I'm reading it yeah because um, then that will come through in your delivery as well exactly okay yeah. so do you color code the characters so you're like oh here comes the policeman or here Sometimes. comes the, you know, he's always blue yeah exactly right <laughs> uh, that's exactly the color i had in my head um and you know there's barbara in the shop and we, blah 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 do you do, so you have to think of their voice because obviously you've got to keep make sure that your character stays the same throughout or do they go back and record and those separately or yeah. how do you do it you do it all in one you go do it all do in this. one go i use an app called uh, I Annotate. I use that, that as well. Oh no, I use Notability. I use I Annotate. You use Anna yeah. yeah. Um, I, I Annotate was the one that I found a bit complicated and Notability <laughs> was free, so I still <laughs> use that. I've been using it for years um, and the way I do it is um, I just, I will only probably go through it once because like Joe, I like, I do like it when I'm reading it to be kind of have that feeling of discovery. Yeah. I don't need to know it too well. Um, and then I mark up any words that I'm not sure of yeah. that I've only ever read and never heard said, or, yeah. you know, make sure I know what they are. Um, any names, um, names especially yeah. I, I do a lot of books that are based up north. And so there are things like um, if it's spelled Kirkby, it's yes. it's said Kirby, yeah. you know, just um, to get things right colloquially. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And um, and yeah, and I have like a color code. So my leading female is always yellow. My leading male is always bright green. Right. <laughs> the so you know. one's always blue. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. The mother character, <laughs> motherly characters are always shades of purple. Um, random characters who come in and don't have much to do, like the bank, some you know, yeah. like the bus driver, whatever, just like brown, just your person here. You know, I've just got a line, you just brown. Um, and what I what I did when I first started doing audiobooks was that I tried to differentiate characters with accents. Yeah. Now, um, there's nothing wrong with that, but I think as I've got more experienced, I have discovered, especially if you're doing a, um, a series, is that sometimes they don't mention until book five where that character is from. <gasps> oh. So if you've started and gone, oh, look, she's got ginger hair and she's got freckles and she says that she's from a tiny village in the middle of nowhere, I'm just going to make her Scottish. Yes. Why not? Yeah. And then you get to book five and they say she's from London. You're like, oh. I'm going to have to have a conversation with the publisher now. <laughs> you know, so you can set yourself up for a fall. Um, and so what I tend to do is try and do it tonally. Right. Um, so, you know, you, you can do it with pitch and, and if one person's talking or, or is on a phone call or something and you're only hearing one side of it, then, you know, you can keep it at a pitch quite close to your own. And then if there's a man and a woman speaking, you can, you can drop one and raise the other slightly yeah. just to give that differentiation on the page, but still tonally keep them the same. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it just gives you more freedom as you're, you're reading it. Trying to you're not trying to make them into animation characters and no. totally different. So and no. do you find you're doing the same, Joe, where you're just sort of like tonally changing them rather than... Because yeah. I do remember that incident with you, Liz, with the accent, and we are like, oh, God, now what? And we had to go back and say, well, we've why have you made that person Scottish? Yeah, How does yeah. that work? You know, have you you've not had that problem? Or um, do you do... I, I have to say, I've noticed more and more that books are being written with audio books in mind, and, okay. and certainly a lot of the ones I've done, um, and the accents are being mentioned as you go along. Um, but if if not, then I am quite wary of that, and I will sort of just give them a bit more of a neutral tone. And and, and I use different tempos as well to characterise people. Yeah, that's useful. I think useful. that's that's something that. Yeah, you sort of you sort of realise it's really useful. You can just slow down certain characters. It gives them a completely different voice or, yeah. or breath, where their breath comes from. Mm. Um, yeah, so it, it's it can be tricky when you get when you get a regional a book that's set in a, in in I, I did a book that was set in sort of Bristol Bath area, um, and that's where I'm from as yeah. well, Bristol. So I I can't I'm comfortable with that accent. But then when everyone in the book is from there yes. and you have to do lots of different versions of that same area, you, you have to be aware of, you can't just use your stock, no, <laughs> no. your stock accent for that. You've got yeah. to, you've got to differentiate and find different ways, yeah. which, which I, I find interesting as well. And it, not it, kind of caricature them. You want exactly. them to not be patronised, you know, because this is what I think you sound like. This is, you know, you make making it feel real. And yeah, yeah. the distinction, I think it's really important if you're going to characterise people to make the distinction when they're talking uh, to make to make it dramatic to make it to make it a scene yeah um, I find is more useful so yeah. that it's clearer mm. rather than just a, a neutral all the way through so, so how long would you say both of you spend when when I send you a you know I'm talking just like a 
an average sort of drama book like how how long would you say that takes you to prep are we talking a week or less or um it depends how how much i do it all at once if i just grab an hour a couple of hours here yeah. and there i i like to have a fortnight just yes. so i can dip in and out of it you know mm. if you give it to me three days before i'm due to record yeah. it then i'm really going to have to try and sit down and you know, like do a full day just reading and i find that really intense um and then there are some books i did a, like quite a spooky book once and i couldn't read it in the evenings i normally like to read oh, in the evenings. i couldn't read it in the evenings it was too, it was too spooky <laughs> yeah, I was like, so I had weird <laughs> dreams about this one um yeah and i had to sit in a dark studio and record it, it was terrifying. Yeah. um but yeah i i i would like to have to at least two ideally two weeks, ideally weeks, two weeks. Yeah. like you can do it yeah. i would say like three or four days or more just... because you have a, your own schedule in life and sometimes you think yeah. how am i going to fit yeah. all this reading yeah. in before and some yeah especially if you're working good... on something else at the same yeah, time and exactly then... yeah. and some publishers are really good at that and i have recently had a few where it's just like so could they start next monday and you're like oh you want oh, me right, to you're giving read? them a th three <laughs> yeah. days to prep and i do think that's yeah. you know that is that is hard well then so. you're kind of prepping and reading at the same time so you get on the train home and be reading the rest of it but the danger yeah. with that is that if you haven't had the chance to get um a character breakdown yeah. which i like to have so your notes of like rough age where they're from um you know what makes yeah. them t just something that kind of um that helps you differentiate between all the characters like a little table um then if you get to the end of the book and you've just kind of, you know, it's set in Birmingham, so they've got a Midland accent, and then you get to the end and it says, oh, they're Eastbourne, born and bred, and you're ugh, yeah. on the last page and you haven't yeah. had a chance to get to the end of the book, which yeah. is different to, you know, being told where the character's from in the fifth book in the series. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. But I think... But I also think... that's fine if, like, writers want to just, like, it's fine, it's all fine, but I just think with what's available to you, you want to be able to do the best possible job. Yeah. And and if you're short of time, then it just makes it harder, really. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Mm. I think, though, when I did recently get that with an actor being given sort of three days to prep, I was like, well, look, you're not giving them much time to prep, so as long as you're aware of that, they can do the best they can, but I think that's just for the agent to sort or say they'll do the best but you're not giving them much time to prep I think that's a fair thing to say to people because I think they'll understand that it's just that they've got to ram it in for whatever reason someone's mm. cancelled and they need to fill that slot so yeah they're, they're usually pretty understanding when I have had that situation and yeah. I think they are <clears throat> they do try and give people as much time because they want the best out of you as well so that actually is quite a nice way of working I think generally um, are there any genres of books that you particularly enjoy reading or do you just actually you don't mind it's not because i um, think i would struggle with sort of historical books and things like that personally if i was asked to but yeah i, I don't really mind I, I i quite like it to be a you know a mixture of things but i i do like crime do i do you? like crime yeah. thrillers i like dark stuff yeah i, I find and it would interesting you choose to read that anyway that's yeah your kind I, of... I love having a reason to read that for yeah. work and uh mm. yeah and it's it's yeah it's interesting dark, you know dark books and ho horror would be interesting. I've done a couple of those in the past. Really? But, but I'd like, yeah, I'd be happy to do more of that. It's just stuff I've always been interested in. Anyway. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I've, I've done a lot of children's books as well, which are, they can be quite tiring. Yeah, children's they can. Books, because there are a lot of characters yes. usually and they do require I was going to say be a bit more animated and, maybe. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've, had, I've had one experience, I think, where I was doing a, a children's book and it was all culminating the end of this book this crazy scene with all these different characters that all these voices that you know, my own fault that i put these voices in <laughs> more and more characters were arriving and I, there was a point where i thought i was going to pass out like, <laughs> like, 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 oh god i sort of felt this pain in my head I just had to stop <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, this isn't right. Out of this isn't right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I'm so now. quite wary of that with children's books. Yeah, but, um, but yeah, it's yeah. Do enjoy a, a variety of stuff though. Yeah, but yeah. Fast. I like reading books by comedians. Like, um, I love Bossy Pants by Tina Fey and Yes Please, and you know, I like I like those kinds of books. And I do. I read a lot of crime for audio books as well. So luckily, I enjoy that too. Yeah. Um, I'm currently working my way through the Harry Potter series with my son, who's right. seven. <laughs> and you're enjoying those? Um, are you sitting there reading it as a... Is it, I mean, when, when you're reading to your kids now, are you sitting there with your audio book head on or are you just actually being mum? Because I'm all in the films. I'm like when Professor McGonagall comes along and I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh yes, let's, <laughs> let's do my best Maggie Smith. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and have you, have you managed to discover any new authors that you hadn't heard of before that you've now worked with? 
Um, well, I, I wasn't aware of Julia Chapman, who does the Dell's Detective series that yeah. I've been involved in for about a decade. And she'd written several books before that, and some of them under a different name, actually. And lots of her books have been translated into French. She's had a lot of success over there as well. But I started reading these absolutely charming kind of, I suppose you'd call them cosy crime. Yeah. Set in a little Yorkshire village. Um, and my family's from uh, Yorkshire. So I was very comfortable doing them from the offset and I love them. And just over the course of them, I've completely fallen in love with the characters. I am so invested. Really? Yeah, I really <laughs> care about like, will they, won't they? Are they yeah. <laughs> you know, they've been in love for such a long time and they just don't know. <laughs> you know, I love those books. And so you discovered her from doing her books initially and yeah. now I just really enjoy her as an author. I love them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you found anyone, Joe, or you? In, in all honesty, I don't think I'd heard of any of the authors. Really? <laughs> the and then now that you're, yeah, yeah, so, you can yeah. just enjoy them for who, what they write now. Yeah, mm. yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I, I used to read a lot, and I probably haven't read as much in recent years. Yeah, it's quite nice really though, actually, likes. being recommended books. You know, well, we, I'm on a WhatsApp group with a load of mums, and people recommend all the time. I've just finished this, and actually, that's great because if you go into a bookshop now, I'm like, oh my god, I don't even know where. I love buying the actual book. I don't have a Kindle. I'm a, like, I need mm. a physical book, and it's yeah. it's quite overwhelming. There are so many to go and choose from, so it's quite nice actually. If you're like, oh, can you do this audio book, and you're like, oh, actually, I quite like. Yeah, this. it's Although nice to I'm have gonna a reason go and see to, what else yeah. they've got. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Oh, I was just going to say something else about accents as well because um, I've narrated um, World War II dramas before, and that's really interesting because they actually dissuade you from using any accents at all, oh. primarily because you may have, say, you've got an English character who's a spy, so. Yeah he or she is speaking English and then they go to Germany and they're speaking fluent German uh, and then there's someone Italian who's and they're speaking Italian and now how are you go are you going to keep changing their accent yeah um, mm. or are, how are people going to know it's the same person if they're constantly changing their voice right it's going to sound like four different people and then if you're in a room where someone is speaking German to three Italian people how how are you yes. going to differentiate yeah. that but what I have found is um, like what Joe was saying earlier is that in those books they tend to say he said in fluent Italian, she said in stilted right. French, or, yeah, you know, yeah. so then you get told how they're speaking, so you don't need to show it. Yes. Um, so that, and that's quite a good point for like actors as well, like don't show me, don't show me what's happening, you know, make me feel it, just yes. tell me about it. So, um, yeah, but that was interesting, because the first time I came across one of those books, I was like, oh my God, I've got how yeah, am I going to yeah, do yeah. this? Yeah. Um, because uh, like he was saying about having like doing something from Bristol and you can't just use your one Bristol voice for that yeah. because everyone is from Bristol. And similarly, if you've got five Italian characters, yeah. that, like how are you going to, you know, especially if they're all about the same age and they're all spies, they're all clever. <laughs> they're all like, what am I, has one of them got an adenoid problem? Like, yeah. how am I going to do this? Um, so yeah, there's, so that with those books, um, speaking in a neutral voice is more encouraged. And it actually, in a way, it kind of gives you more freedom. Yeah. Um, because you're not, constantly changing uh you know like how does this person speak you know it, it is more than about um someone's intention yeah um, and about it becomes so much more about the plot i suppose than although the characters are still important um but yeah i just thought that was like really no, it's interesting good. When it's I first good to know writing. i think you know you two have been doing it for so long that you've learned a lot of tricks and i think part of this doing this podcast is to you know get to know you and what you're up to but also it's really helpful. These are helpful tips for people that are about to go and do audiobooks because a lot of actors haven't necessarily done them. And then when they get asked, they're a bit like, oh, I wasn't expecting it to take quite so long yeah. or I didn't realise it was going to be reading that many words in one day. It's exhausting that, you know, when you have four days of back to back reading, um, which is often four or five days or, you know, is the average. That is exhausting. I mean, how do you pace yourself? I, you know, I'm just is that something that you have to think about or actually are you kind of used to it now and you just crack on um i quite like a half day in the middle of it like i wouldn't do like every day all day monday to friday uh, by choice like maybe usually the studios um if you're not recording from home they'll give you a choice you want the monday and the tuesday and then the thursday yeah. or just give yourself a, a day off in the middle um or try and do a weekend or try and do like a you know oh Thursday, yeah friday, friday, friday and then a monday, monday. monday. but Sometimes yeah. it doesn't work like that because you do, you might have to travel up north to go to one of the you know studios which yeah. would, I, I like I like to do it all in one you do. I like to do, do it yeah straight I like through. to do it straight through in a row just to get get the the through line and mm. I, I and just if you're in that zone I prefer you don't it. find it too tiring um, it is tiring it's yeah. really tiring but yeah I think 
I think the first time you go and do it, it's it, it knocks you for six. You don't realise how tiring it's going to mm. be. Um, mm. it, a key thing with audiobooks, I think, is you need to be good at sight reading. You yes. just need to be. If, yes. if you're not, I can't really imagine how you could do it. Yeah. Um, it, and I think, you know, it would be a real struggle. Um, yeah. It would just take so long um, because every time you make a mistake, you have to go back and do it again, obviously. Um, so, yeah, but I, I, I think you get you get better as you go along. Yeah. Um, I find, um, but I can't really do much in the evenings after I've done an audiobook. For no, the day. you're not going to go and do so a show. I won't be doing anyone who's in theatre. I won't be going to be like, well, oh, quick audiobook <laughs> in between. Done that before. Well, actually, one of yeah. my girls yeah. just did that, and it wasn't ideal, but it's, it was. It's yeah. horrible. <laughs> yeah, I felt really bad actually. I did that a lot in the pandemic actually, because I just um, I'd set up my home studio yes. in the January. Um, serendipitously because then we all had to stay at home from that March April didn't we um, and with my kid I was just like full-time intense three four-year-old playing under the table like doctors and nurses and uh, got just uh, loads of Lego <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, it's triggering uh, right a bit of PTSD from it all to be honest haven't we all um but then in the evenings, I uh, had to earn a living, so then he'd, he'd go to bed, yeah. and then my husband would have to, you know, go out, or, <laughs> well, he could only go out for half an hour, couldn't you? Up in the loft. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, and then I'd do, do my audio books in the evenings yeah. for a few hours, and that was intense. Yeah. Yeah, because... Because they were sort of saying to us, you can do them o over the few days that you, you... They gave you the time to do it, but yeah. it's such a tiring time. And then, and it, then it just it. got so stretched yeah. out. Like, I would rather do full days and get it out of the way. Yeah. Then, like, because the half days, you know, you're there and you're still doing the same book a fortnight later. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that was really... That was intense. So, mm. finally, just our, one last question on the audio books. Is there, a, is there an author or is there a book, if you could choose any audio book that you got to choose that you wanted to read what what is it that it would be oh the wizard of oz oh really <laughs> oh yeah really that's you've got all those characters and just all that imagination and crazy stuff happening <laughs> yeah i'd love to do that but I don't, they tend to ask um the famouses yeah. to do the famous books yeah. you see yeah. but we can dream no but this is like, you know <laughs> the fantasy what would it be what would you be what would be your ultimate book Joe? um i i mean anything by michael rosen really really i, like, I love michael rosen for yeah. his poems and i grew up as a kid reading them out loud regularly my favorite collection was a book called quick let's get out of here and i just i just love it i would, would love to do that book yeah 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 excellent um did you ever listen to audiobooks when you were kids uh, well, um, yeah. in the car we had tapes story yeah. tapes story yeah. tapes <laughs> yeah um which if you're younger than 20 kids <laughs> <laughs> yeah we had them in the car we had um the full full collection of mr men the mr men books oh, yes. um and we had uh, johnny morris's baby animals narrated by johnny morris yeah lots of people won't know who he did is that, did that inspire you as a... with, the, with the animals yeah because yeah, he did he gave all the little animals different brilliant. voices you know yeah. with the, the elephant yeah. and, the, and the koala was really cute um, I still remember them and then we also had which I praise my parents for we had the Star Wars trilogy really yeah which when you think about you know what the Star Wars books are actually about um, it's quite serious really for kids isn't it um, <laughs> but yes and, and I recently found I didn't find the tape but I did find the book that accompanied them it was like a read along tape yeah and it had um so it, and it says said r2d2 so i'm yeah. just like reading it to my son <laughs> <laughs> um and then you've got c oh c3po and um uh and um oh i said this would happen you know when my brain just cuts out what's his <laughs> name you know obi-wan yeah. obi-wan kenobi well luke just feel the force yeah um, and I've, I love doing that because I, I read those a lot to my kid on the train and I was kind of thinking, oh, God, I hope people are listening to me because this is, I'm fabulous at this. <laughs> hope there's a casting director yeah. somewhere yeah. <laughs> just listening to me on the train. But he loved it as well. He was oh, really into it. Brilliant. Yeah. And what were you listening to in the car? Um, well, at home, I was always listening, like, before I'd go to bed, I'd listen to Roald Dahl's Revolting Rhymes. That oh, was a, yes, yeah. that Roald was, Dahl, great. Yeah, yeah. that was... That was want to listen to a lot and um the snow queen this, who mind. narrated that oh, i can't remember some amazing lady mm. <laughs> i can't remember but I'd, yeah yeah those are those are the ones that stick in my head the most but i had a whole ton a whole ton yeah. of stuff we've got them in the car actually the more the more modern versions um and it's kate winslet narrating matilda 
Really? Oh, I mean, it's brilliant. brilliant. Yeah. It's so good. And Julian Ryan Tut does James and the Giant Peach. Brilliant. So great. And then yeah. we also had all the Julia Donaldson short yeah. stories yeah. with people like Josie Lawrence narrating them. Fantastic. They are, it's yeah. brilliant. And actually, when you've got kids to entertain in the back of the car, it is really great. But I yeah. actually really enjoy listening to them too. So it's a really nice way to pass the time in the car. I did as a kid sort of like, you know, have the tapes, but... Mm. we're going back way too far I don't think anyone will remember the story so. <laughs> but um, yeah it, it's it's brilliant it's been some it is a great way to entertain yeah oh and I love I, I had an interview with Kate Winslet as well about when she uh, I don't know if it was Matilda that she was narrating that she was talking about but she'd done some narrating during the pandemic as well and she'd gone in her laundry room and just covered the whole place in duvet covers um, and then someone started vacuuming upstairs. Oh, really? And I just thought, oh, this is heaven because, you know, you, I've, she's an amazing actor. And yeah. then here she is contending with the same problems that all yeah, of us have. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I loved, I loved listening, listening to that. I can't remember where the um, interview was. But it's just nice to know that, you know, she's just a like normal human. <laughs> she's an actual human. <laughs> Hoping that the neighbours won't mow the lawn and the dog won't know, bark and the helicopter so won't hard. be circling. And... Working from home. <laughs> Absolute nightmare. So something I've noticed from your, you know, you're telling me what you have to do to prep. It's you're, you're kind of being expected to do above and beyond an average voiceover. You have to think about the characters. You have to prep the books. Um, you know, are you expected to self-direct in these booths? I mean, who you who is in the when you go in to do an audiobook, who is directing you, or are you self-directing? How does how does that work? Um, you go. I don't... Well, there's a certain there's a certain amount of prep that you really have to do that you, yeah, you might not be used to yeah. having to do. Um, you're not are uh, you're not given a much of a briefing usually. And then I know you mentioned there's a company that, that does that. Oh, yeah. So there's a company called the Audio Factory. Yeah. And that's the only company I think I remember working for. You've given me a crib sheet, a list of characters, um, you know, like where they're from, how old they right. are, that kind of thing, which so is super helpful. Um, but it's only something that I do myself. It's just nice to have something that tallies with it. Yeah. And also when there is a question of where are they from, it doesn't say anywhere. You know, sometimes they have um, better access to asking the um, the publisher or the writer themselves you know if there's any sort of blank spaces that it would make it easier for you to have filled in yeah and I think and think when it's particularly tricky we often get questions from you guys up front and we as agents will go to the, the, the publishers and say can you here are some questions from the uh, from the artists that they have in advance but but do you have directors in the sessions or is it does it tend to be just you and the sound engineer and maybe sometimes the sound the... engineer is a producer yeah mm. slash director slash sound engineer and they do everything but you don't have the writer in the book in oh, the no, 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 no 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 I have I have access to one writer who I've uh, who I mentioned earlier who I've forged a friendship with over the years yeah um, I'd be very happy to contact her direct but I know that with some production companies that's an absolute no no you no. have to know who you're working with and what your boundaries are yeah um, but, but yeah you can go through the agent or through the it depends so if if it was before I'd started recording I would ask you yes if I was recording I would ask whoever my engineer was yes. or the producer sometimes it is um someone who considers themselves an engineer and they're hands off and you just you just do it um mm. but mostly for me I would have someone either in my ear or through the glass going through the script and making sure I didn't do any kind of, you know, you do little mini edits where mm. you put in an of or an and, yeah, or just yeah. words that aren't quite there, um, just because you're reading so fast and your brain's making it flow and it's mm. not necessarily the exact words on the page. Yeah. So they'll pick it up for that. And then sometimes, I guess sometimes when it's getting to lunchtime and your stomach starts gurgling, yeah. but you're not aware of it, and they're like, we'll have to go over that again because we've got some noises. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's, no. it's, I prefer, I, I don't like doing it on my own. Loads of people do. And I think if you use ACX or um, lots of the websites where you just record books yourself and get on with it, yeah. that's completely normal. And lots of people do that. I just, as a it's preference nice. for myself, I like the security of having someone making sure that I'm yeah. quality control. Yeah, I think absolutely. it's important to have a dialogue with someone yeah. while, while you're doing it, who's, who's keeping an eye on what you're doing. Because mm. you have to be in the moment with yeah, what yeah, you're doing. Yeah. You, can't, you can't keep an eye on what you're no. doing while you're doing it all the way through. Um, mm. It's just quite hard to self-direct. So you'd think that there would be someone from the publisher or the director, you know, somebody there sort of. But I guess once you've done one book, they do tend to sort of say, right, I'm guessing, you know, you can do the rest similar to how you did the first. But for that first book, I mm. think a lot of people would expect someone to be there. So it's interesting that there isn't always somebody there no, to direct no. you. So. Some, some are more hands on than others. Yeah. And, and yeah, certainly. I think every time I've been to Penguin, they've been really good. Yeah, I love Penguin. Yeah, they've mm. been really good. At, you know, there's a, you feel like you've got someone who's on top of things, who's helping you along the way. If you yeah. need it, and it's kind of like someone's you. going. 
it's very calming. But I went to a conference and um, it, you have audio book narrators and Miriam Margulies, is that who says it? Yeah. Miriam Margulies, she was at the front and uh, I remember someone saying that they just, you know, they do so much from home and from their, or from their toilet or from their garden shed or whatever yeah. and they just do it all by themselves and they listen through it all and whether they've done a rock and roll or a fluff and go back and, um, and just done the whole thing themselves on their own. <laughs> She went, you fucking what? <laughs> <laughs> you should be a fucking director. <laughs> horrified, I horrified by it. I want to be in the booth with her. That's <laughs> yeah. who I want to be. Yeah, in the that's, a, that's I don't a think you get a lot done. There'd just be so, so many stories. Yeah. You'd, need, you'd need twice as many days. Yeah. <laughs> brilliant. Well, look, thank you so much for all your helpful information today. I think that's been brilliant. Sorry about the swear. No, no, I it think it's in quotation marks. Swearing's allowed. It's fine. Um, I've been told to cut back on my swearing so I think you'll find I'm being really good okay so I've got a few other questions that I've been asking some of my other guests and I was just going to sort of it kind of ties in a little bit with what we've been talking about but and it's not just audio books this is like voiceovers going in for commercial work because you both do commercial work as well and and video games and everything so you know just generally do you have any rituals that you do before you go and do a voiceover because I've got one girl who has to walk past the flat white before she it's like a good luck thing she goes and walks by a flat gets herself a coffee and then goes off to the session or another one who has to you know has to pop into liberties or whatever whatever you know or is it that you have to gargle for for 10 minutes beforehand but do you have any rituals that you like to do before a voiceover session um i do like my voice to be warmed up so i will have probably yeah. had a hot drink and done a bit of humming yeah um either walk into the studio or just walking around the house i don't care if people think i'm weird <laughs> past that but if I'm recording from home I make sure that my studio is set up and that I'm recording from you know my proper mic and not the laptop mic and so yeah. like I just have to you know my internet connection is working yeah I get quite stressed about tech yeah so well, just to feel because calm you're, you're that's the I engineer would... as well as the voice so I yeah. always thought the whole working from home was very difficult because you have to become the engineer as well as the voice so yes you're like just pinpointing everything making sure it's all set up yeah and then I always make sure I've got a glass of water in the studio as well <laughs> <laughs> just to got it also yeah what yeah. about you Joe anything I mean yeah nothing exciting I'm afraid I do a warm-up every time I do any kind of voice work or yeah um, yeah and that's about it really I just make sure I make sure I've got plenty of time yeah. while going so mm. that I'm relaxed um yeah I mean there's no way I would go and to do an audio but without having warmed up because it's yeah. just it's yeah that's essential but and is I, that something you learned when you were at training like well I think otherwise you have to go back and then do the first chapter that you did that morning because yeah. you're just going to sound scratchy sound completely yeah. different yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and I do make sure at lunchtime I walk around the block just because otherwise you're sitting down all day in a small room so yeah. just have a walk around the block get some fresh air get outside when you've got a break yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely because I think when you've been sitting for a long time you just I think oh, the energy gets... levels will definitely exactly. go down no I know I think it's it's tough what is okay and again this is not directed at audiobooks but probably you've both been in the booth a lot for all sorts of reasons uh, for, for d different jobs what is the most unusual direction you've been asked to perform in a voiceover booth <laughs> and I'm pretty sure you've both got some quite nice yeah. ones I've, I've got yeah I think I yeah I had to do I had to do a line I had to do some lines on, on a on a voiceover um, under water so they brought in a huge <gasps> bucket for the water there was a, they were sort of thinking how can we do this and then then yeah they did sound effects on an audio book technician had no no, no it wasn't an audio book oh. for, for, for a VO and yeah. the yeah they just said oh if we get a bucket of water in here, would you be happy to put your head on? Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> and, they like it and, up. Yeah, I don't really know. Like they might, but they managed nice. to do it. And yeah, and I did a See? yeah, dunk my head in and did this line. It's <laughs> it sounded really good. Yeah, but that, that was brilliant. that was quite fun. Yeah, that's what I love. Is like the, the what is it that they get you to do in these booths? Some of the things is like the creating the foley or whatever. It can yeah. be quite. But I have not had anyone have to stick their head in the water before. So that's brilliant. I love that. Uh, but you lose, I'm well, sure. I mean, there's obviously the old animal noises and yes. things like that that you have to do, but that's part of the course. Um, but I think <laughs> one that comes up quite a lot that lots of voiceovers will recognise this. It sounds weird to everybody else, but they go, <clears throat> "Could you? Can you do it again? But can you just? Can you be slower but faster?" Yeah. Um, and uh, and actually, after you've after you've done a few, it starts to make sense. So what they're asking you to do is take out any pauses, try and do it all in one breath. Just don't breathe, um, but don't take any breaths. So so that the words have longer to sit there without there being any breaks in them, but it takes less time. 
Um, but then the engineer doesn't have to take your breaths out because then it starts to sound unnatural and weird. Yeah, yeah. So you have to be able to do it naturally. Um, it so I think once I'd worked that one out, when they say, can you, can you be faster but slower? Once I understood how to do that, I felt like I'd had a huge breakthrough. Yeah. Yeah, it only took me a decade. <laughs> You've nailed it now. I nailed it. What yeah, about finally. legals? Legals are really hard. Oh, yeah. I love talking yeah. fast, though. Do you do it? Like, yeah. you enjoy those. Terms and conditions think, apply. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the cars. So when I used to work on cars, producing those ads, and you'd be like, and here's the script. And they, you could see they're literally pale, going, oh, my God. Because there's so much information you have to say. Yeah. That the shorter you make it, the more, more time we can spend on the actual ad, or the fun bit of the ad, mm -hmm. especially with radio so it, or something like that. So it's like, yeah, so could you say that as quickly as possible? Because legally we need to. Yeah. But actually I want to. Or can you say it in a deep voice so that if we speed it up, you don't sound like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Are you, are you a bit of legals? Fancy that? Yeah. I remember I think you're quite good at it because not yeah, everyone yeah. can do it. Yeah, it is like, it could sing it. Just it could sing the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, don't mind a rapid delivery. Yeah. 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 No, because some people really don't like it. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so who would you most, if you got an opportunity and you went into a session, who would you most like to share a voiceover booth with? It's almost like the dinner party guest, isn't it? But I'd put it in a voiceover booth. If I hadn't done my homework and it was a difficult book, I'd like um, Susie from Dictionary Corner. <laughs> on countdown oh, really? yeah uh, you know shot. last minute book otherwise controversially because uh, you know some people need to take an antihistamine i'd like a dog in there just so calming um, i thought you were gonna a say dog. someone that was like oh, who? No, no, like oh you just they like just... to have a dog in the booth with there's you there's a producer called angus who i work with regularly and he has two gorgeous dogs one of them's called mouse i can't remember what the other one's called but they just sit, they sit in with him. Yeah. But they are so quiet and they just sit and listen. Aww. And then when you come out for your break, they just, they come up to you and they're almost like, it's like they're grateful. Oh, I love like, dogs. Because they've, they've got used to the sound of your voice, I yeah. suppose. And so they think that they know you. Oh, it's just lovely. Oh, but so yeah, there's not an actor in particular or an actress that you really like. I'd really like to share the booth with that person. You'd just rather mm. a couple of dogs. I think, um, you know, someone kind of like a witty, intelligent other woman, uh, Claudia Winkleman or Sue Perkins with... yes. or someone like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have a good laugh with them. Yeah. Yeah. What about mm. you, Joe? Someone who smells nice, who has good breath, because <laughs> the booths are pretty small. <laughs> so, uh... That is a fair comment. That is a fair comment. So, yeah. yeah, I don't but really, don't they really are... mind. Yeah, mind. There's always that fragrance. Yeah. 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 Ooh, Alison Hammond. Yeah. She'd be fun. Oh, she'd be fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think, yeah, that, that's fair enough. I would probably go for uh, one of my you know, a hot man of some kind, probably. <laughs> just be like, yeah, just speak. I love that. Um, okay, oh, so, <laughs> Shh, cut that out, my husband will be listening. Uh, it's Friday night, it's five o'clock. You've just finished a voiceover session. Where are you gonna go out in Soho? Oh my God, I never go out oh anymore. God. Okay, but where did you go out 20 years ago? Uh, well, actually, do you know what, that's not true. I went I'm to the National Theatre yeah. um, the other night to see my friend Raj uh, in a play at the National. Yeah. The Father and the Assassin, that was very good. Um, and before that, we went to Joe Allen's and we had a lovely meal and some, uh, we didn't have cocktails there, but they do do nice cocktails there, so. Joe Allen's, but I do love, I do, it's not like a right old lush, I do love the ivy. Oh, I was oh, going to say. Love the ivy. <laughs> and they do a lovely martini. Yeah. Was it the, the, the ivy martini? club upstairs <laughs> yeah. at the ivy club, if you're ever lucky enough to be invited. Yeah. Mm. Yes. And what about you, Joe? Where would you be going? Oh, controversially, the casino to play a bit oh, of Where are they? <laughs> yeah. Where are they? They're yeah. up on old, uh, on like Tottenham Court yeah, Road like or Leicester something. Square yeah. around there. Yeah, so I like I like I like to play blackjack before it gets too busy. I like to play like sometimes to in the sometimes afternoon. Sometimes they have some fabulous lounge singers there as well, don't they? Yeah, yeah they do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do. Some good shows on. Mm. Oh, that's yeah. great. <laughs> I love that. Okay, so finally, my last my last question to you both is what advice would you give to an actor going into the booth for the first time? If it's their first time going in, they don't know what to expect, you know, and I'm not just talking audiobooks, I'm just talking generally. I, I think probably the hardest ones are the uh, c commercial ones often when you've got lots of people in a room judging you. What would you oh, say yeah. that somebody should think about or manage? I should do that. What, what is it they always say on the X Factor? Just be yourself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, be yeah God. Uh, just a be, better version of that. Be, oh, be, <laughs> be warmed up um, and just prepared. That's yeah. really helpful, open. actually. Yeah, um, and yeah, sort of, 
I know it sort of seems obvious, but just to take take a moment, take your time um, before you before you before you do, don't don't launch into it too quickly. Um, yeah. Because I think sometimes you, you're going faster than you realise. You can always speed up if you need to. Someone will tell you to speed yeah. up if you yeah. need to. Um, but I think often, if you if you're tense or stressed, then you can yeah, yeah. you can Listen. go too yeah. quickly. Listen to what the client wants mm -hmm. and do it. You know, yeah. I think I think one of the key things I would also say to people is just get there far in advance that you're not you're not late. The late thing can be a real issue, even if you oh, think, yeah. oh, I should be there by then. I think especially when you're at the beginning, you don't want to go in feeling stressed. That's the worst because already your anxiety will be there. But you add stress of being late and you're mm. really, really mm. nervous. And then that's really hard. You get dry mouth and you it, it's very hard to manage that. So yeah. I always yeah. sort of try and say to people, that would be one of my, but I think you're right. It's like actually just take a minute, listen to what the client has to say, yeah. and try and, yeah. and you be, want to be, be relaxed, yeah. Yeah. enthusiastic about it as well when they present you with a script. Like, don't yeah, really yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I'll do my best. You know, <laughs> yeah. there's a certain Absolutely. amount of positivity that I think it is our responsibility to bring into the room. Absolutely, and that always elevates your performance if you yeah. believe in what you're doing, doesn't it? Yeah. So try and enjoy that, what you're doing yeah. with, with the people there. You know, I, I, yeah. I just think that's that's what. That's what's going to make it good. Yeah. Blow your nose. Take an yeah. antihistamine if there's a dog in the room. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> make sure you're hydrated. Yeah. Um, yeah, breathe through it. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And that's it for the show. Hope you liked it. And if you did, please rate and review the show wherever you get your podcasts. LVB Presents was presented by me, Steph Thompson, and produced by Mike Hansen for Pod People Productions and recorded by Sean Dios at Jungle Studios in Soho, London. See you next time. Yeah.